Welcome back to Tips Over Tea. This is episode 15. I am Nicole, your host. We had the great pleasure of talking with Dr. Jenny Mann and learning more about her journey with Hashimoto's and endometriosis and how she healed herself. So if that sounds like something that you would like to learn a bit more about, make sure you grab your tea and listen in. Good afternoon, everyone. This is episode 15 of Tips Over Tea. I'm so honored to have Dr. Jenny Mann here with us today. Welcome to the show, Miss Miss Mann. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Glad to be here. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I am <laughs> tongue-tied today. Bloopers live. Yeah. Anywho, I um, I was I was reading your bio. It's very very um, inspirational. I always love when people find a way to heal themselves. But it's interesting that you were diagnosed with Hashimoto's and severe endometriosis during your um when you first started med school. So that's interesting. So when back that up, when you first started med school, what were your intentions? Cause it shifted once you were diagnosed, right? If I understood that correctly. Yeah, it's interesting because I went into, before med school, I was working for the Environmental Protection Agency, doing environmental work for the government. Mm-hmm. I was getting really frustrated there, just kind of being a cog in the wheel, you know, and just not feeling like I was having a lot of impact. Mm-hmm. So I was like looking around at all different schools. I was like studying for the MCAT, I was going to go to med school. And then um, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And my friend was like, you need to visit like a naturopathic school and check it out. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'm I'm not going to go down that route, but I'm just going to do it. And I went and I listened to this lecture Mm -hmm. on this orientation day that they had. And it just like blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I I just felt like, oh my God, like if I was going to design a type of medicine, this is what I would design. Yeah. And it just kind of blew me open. And I, um, I had a flight back and I was just like, so thinking about it. And I, I heard my name over the loudspeaker because I like was missed the boarding to my flight, even though I was in the gate, like I was just Mm -hmm. really moved by what I'd heard. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think at the time I was like, oh, this is just what I need to do with my life. But I didn't realize that it was really for a lot of it was because I needed my own healing. Yeah. And that was really a calling for that too. So when I started med school, I was just like, I don't know, I just medicine seemed really intriguing to me. I just wanted to help people wanted to be more on the ground than like in the government bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. And then I'd had a time, I'd been pretty sick. Mm-hmm. I'd been told that everything was fine so many times that I had almost stopped listening to my body. Mm -hmm. Um, but as a, as a student there, you're required to go in to the clinic, get your own clinical care. So you learn how to start, you know, being in the, what it's like to be a patient and what Mm -hmm. it's like to experience the medicine. And, um, and that's when I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's and I was like, Oh, well that explains a lot. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. So then that kind of set me on a different trajectory in terms of like how I thought about my education, the way I went through school, because so much of it was around autoimmune and thyroid and healing my own body. Mm-hmm. I, you made a, a, some, an important statement there too, that we have a tendency to, we hear our body, we try to act on it, and then we're pretty much told we're fine because you know we're normal within all, the normal range of whatever di- demographic that you want to use. And then you're like, okay, something must be wrong with my, I must be imagining something's not right. So that's interesting. I, I, a lot of us will get, get up and get into that. That's, mm-hmm. that's thinking, okay, well maybe it's something I, I'm just misinterpreting, but yeah, it is important to listen to your body. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. um, so how did you go about healing yourself from that um, or mm-hmm. to a place where it's manageable? Is it, is it healable? Is it, or is it just a place where you can just manage it with certain dietary and lifestyle choices? Yeah, I think with my Hashimoto's, for mm-hmm. example, like when I started my antibodies, which is the uh, autoimmune response to the thyroid, were in the three hundreds and now they're in normal limits. So undetectable. So it's, it's totally possible to like, change that autoimmune process. Mm -hmm. Um, I still take thyroid medication because, you know, in Hashimoto's, the the autoimmune response, it destroys the thyroid gland over time. And I haven't found a way to repair the gland yet. If anyone Mm -hmm. out there knows a way, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, 
it's totally managed. You know, I used to get flares all the time. I used to just feel awful at mm -hmm. periods of time and that doesn't happen anymore. It's just stabilized autoimmune response is turned off. I still take the medication, um, but all that autoimmune stuff is managed through lifestyle. Yeah. Like, um, stress reduction, what, what, what type of lifestyle factors should someone yeah. take into consideration if they're still struggling, they're taking meds, but they're still having a hard time. And I know everybody's different, but maybe they can get some tips to try some things. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for people and was for me too, was finding the right diet for your mm -hmm. body. I think that if you're eating foods that are making your body inflamed, that are triggering that autoimmune response, mm -hmm. we eat all the time, right? We have to, cause we're human. So mm -hmm. To like not uh, be putting the right foods in your body that, you know, for me, gluten, dairy, grains, I have to really do that in moderation. Um, but I think finding the right diet for your body is probably the, on a physical level, that's probably the most important thing that you could do. Mm -hmm. I love how you mentioned physical level too. <laughs> <laughs> it's one aspect, right? <laughs> one aspect of many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what other aspects would you say that someone should consider? You know, I, I'm really holistic in my mm -hmm. own approach to my health and with my clients. I mean, we work, when I work with my clients, it's, it's a lot in the physical realm, mm -hmm. but there's mental, emotional, spiritual as well. And I think for me, all of those have been involved in mm -hmm. the autoimmune thyroid mm -hmm. and in the endometriosis. Mm -hmm. um, I've had to do work on all those levels for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I knew like when I, when I got diagnosed, I, I instinctually knew like, oh, I'm creating this to some extent, like mm -hmm. against, you know, not loving my own voice, um, attacking my own self for expressing myself. Mm -hmm. I knew that was, you know, the, the thyroid is really that chakra that's yeah. about your ex personal expression. It's a connection mm -hmm. between your heart and your head. And, um, you know, I really instinctually knew I had to do work there too. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, that is a, um, a big thing that the throat chakra, uh, a lot of women who have, I mean, not saying that you have, but even just we experience some type of abuse that That's tends right. to get, mm -hmm. it tends to get, Sidally, even if it's not so direct, you know, just societally, ancestrally, yeah. you know, what's been done with women for speaking their hearts, for speaking their minds, for yeah. millennia now, you know, it's a huge thing that we're in the process of shifting, but it, it's, it's no small thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it seems like such a, a simple thing to like, how can that like cure me from, or not necessarily cure, but you know, like how can that help heal me? Well, back to the word heal, like healing is more mm -hmm. than, you know, it's, it's a, to me, it's a holistic word in general because healing is not just healing a wound and open wound it's healing emotional wounds and yeah. you know stuff like that. Um, but it, it seems like it's so simple to just work on, on speaking up for myself, but it, it's a major, it's major, right? Like it, it can really <laughs> yeah. change the trajectory of your life and so much. I was taught to be a good girl. My parents mm -hmm. were both ministers. I mean, you know, the whole thing, you shut down mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. You know, I really, uh, really approved of when we shut down a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's, yeah. It's a, uh, I don't want to say praised, but you're like, okay, if I shut down, I make everybody happy. So this must be the right thing to do. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A quick message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and like, you oh. think you're doing the right thing, but then, you know, then this is part of listening to the body, realizing like, mm -hmm. maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe there's something else for me. Yeah. And I think healing is about following those threads, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like whatever, whatever piece feels accessible to you at the moment. Like does food feel accessible? Does going on mm -hmm. thyroid medication feel accessible? Does the spiritual mm -hmm. work feel accessible? Like what feels easiest in that next step? What's like, what's calling the most? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a good point too. Like if you get overwhelmed thinking about all these things that you may have to work on, yeah. like where can you start? Like you don't have to do everything at once because it's a process. And yeah. as you heal something, something else is going to reveal anyway. <laughs> Just know <laughs> it's going to just slowly help you pull stuff back just by starting with one thing. And, and, but it's mm -hmm. so freeing to let, you know, to every time you take off a layer, it may hurt while you're taking the layer off, but when you get to the other side of it, it's just, it's a lot more freeing feeling, right? 
Yeah, and very fulfilling, you know, mm-hmm. for me, because I've had so much chronic illness, mm-hmm. I've had to really make some meaning out of it to make it feel enjoyable, to make it feel fulfilling, mm-hmm. as opposed to just being angry about it, mm-hmm. part of it too, but as opposed mm-hmm. to just getting stuck in that anger or frustration, making mm-hmm. something about it, mm-hmm. you know, finding a way to find enjoyment in the healing, growth in the healing, uh, otherwise it can be a real slog. Yeah, it can. It, it can, you can spiral you, mm-hmm. out, you know, the wrong direction. Well, I don't I like the label stuff, but in a direction that's not suited to your highest good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so endometriosis is, mm. is that, I hear a lot about it. Um, I don't know a lot about it, but you know, that of course they got commercials and stuff for it, but naturally, like how would you approach that treatment or healing? Um, yeah. Well, I think endometriosis is a very complicated condition. Yeah. We don't really understand a lot about it. It affects about 10% of women, mm-hmm. but the amount of like research money that's been devoted to it is so minimal compared to the amount of like pain that our population experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, that's 5% of the population that's dealing with this, like really often debilitating, painful condition. Mm -hmm. Again, often normalized, you know, Mm -hmm. that's like, you should have period cramps. That's just normal. Just zip it and be on your way. And Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I went to Kaiser about it when I was in my early Mm twenties, And they told me that the pain I was having, because I would be doubled over in pain when I would go jogging during mm-hmm. um, when I was like mid cycle, like ovulating. Mm-hmm. And they told me that pain was as common as water. And um, <laughs> I mean, now it's just, uh, you know, it's just so dismissive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just a normal part of being, you know, having a female body is being in pain. It's, just, it's, it's not. <laughs> something too yeah um and i think you know like we're talking about in that level of you know kind of spiritual emotional meaning i mean that area of the body has been extremely traumatized for we're taught not totally to disconnect from it from from our womb space from our pelvis as yeah. women yeah. so i mean that's on that level but i think physically you know again it's all the things it's really finding the right food for your body decreasing inflammation mm-hmm. getting all the nutrients that you need in your body mm-hmm. um removing toxins from the environment from your products that you put on your body and in your body mm-hmm. you know it's it's a combination of so many things that's going on with endometriosis it's a hormone balance too okay so what what's actually happening in the body I mean, I know you said it's not a whole lot, but like, is it the organs? Is it something that has grown? I don't, cause I don't, I honestly exactly. Don't. Yeah. Great question. So yeah, it's kind of like this mysterious, mm-hmm. so, you know, and on it in med school, I didn't learn much about it either to mm-hmm. be honest, for how, for how common it is, but basically the lining of the uterus, mm-hmm. which sheds every, grows every month, sheds every month in menstruating females is growing in a wrong place. So it's growing outside the uterus it's growing in the pelvis it's growing on the ovaries Mm. and so when you get the the period every month when the lining sheds it's also shedding in your pelvis every month Mm. Mm -hmm. so it's extremely painful causes a lot of inflammation Mm. and um, it's just basically those cells that should be contained in the uterus and shed and grow are located outside Mm -hmm. where they should be growing so can create a lot of fibrosis, can create a lot of pain, um, mm-hmm. can create like infertility eventually in people because of all that inflammation that's going on in the pelvis all the time. And then you get side effects often of like depression, fatigue, because the body is every month is going through this huge healing process mm-hmm. from what was done during menstruation. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing is you can't see it well on ultrasound. You can't see it well on MRIs until it's so severe. Mm. So a lot of times people are just told, you know, take ibuprofen. It's normal to have menstrual cramps. But if you're having a lot of pain in your pelvis with intercourse or with uh, menstruation or with orgasm or with exercise, you know, that's not normal. And you need to see an endometriosis specialist to mm-hmm. really look at it and give you, because even gynecologists with me, you know, they didn't say anything. They just kind of were like, oh, you just have severe 
menstrual cramps, but no one talked about endometriosis. Yeah. Yeah. I like that you mentioned, or you kind of listed, like, it's not normal to feel this, like, because you say <laughs> everybody normalizes it. So it's just like, how many things are normalized that really shouldn't be normal, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, how many things we disconnect from, not mm -hmm. listen to, dismiss as anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. you know, being stressed out, mm -hmm. which of course can be part of it, but that's not always all of it. Yeah. And then that process itself is stressful. Like it's putting your body through a lot and then you don't know what's going on. And it's just like, it's a whole cycle. <laughs> it's a whole cycle. Yeah. Yeah, it's like this whole, and then it creates this whole inner talk around what do I believe? What do I not believe? Who should I believe? Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people this all the time. People know when their body is right. Yeah. Especially women. I think they really know when things are dialed in mm -hmm. and when they're not. And mm -hmm. I think it comes down to just like that basic, like, yeah, you don't feel right. Things are probably not right. And trust it. Trust it and, and, and go. Mm -hmm. And pursue some support. Right. Right. Find yeah. someone who can help you sort it out. If they can't help you sort it out, see someone else. Mm -hmm. With Well, then you're right. Yeah. A lot of times we're, we're like, if someone tells us, someone in the white coat tells us we're not right, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't question them or we don't go and mm -hmm. find another doc. I'm like, it's okay to fire your doc. Maybe they're good in some area with you, yeah. but not in other areas. Like, find someone to help yeah. you. Yeah, and appreciate them for who, what they have to offer. Right. But don't expect everything from everyone. This is just like, you know, they know their thing. I know my thing in what mm -hmm. I do. You mm -hmm. know, someone else is going to know another piece. Right. So that's been key in my healing, too, is just, okay, this person can help me with this aspect. This person helps me with this aspect. It really is like a team. Yeah. And um, it's not just a straight line, you know, it's, it's line D. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we don't, it's, we don't think about it. Like you wouldn't go to a dentist if you had a, a foot issue. Right. So it's okay. the same concept. like everybody has their, their things that they specialize in. You may have two different general practitioners, but there's one one general practitioner is like really honed in on this aspect of health, and another one's yeah. honed in on this aspect of health. So it's totally okay to shop around, for lack of a better word, to find someone that can speak to whatever issue you have. Yeah, and sometimes and and trusting your instinct around that. Like um, <laughs> the way I got diagnosed with endometriosis was I was at my friend's clinic, and she had um, an ultrasound tech coming in. I was just visiting her in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And she happened to have like an ultrasound tech come in from a different um, island mm -hmm. and was, she's just like, well, do you want anything ultrasound? Well, the tech is here. And I was like, yeah, I want to see my uterus. I've never seen it before. It's pain in pain all the time. And lo and behold there, you know, by that point they could see the growth of the endometriosis. It was so wow. bad. Wow. So, you know, it's kind of, sometimes mm -hmm. it's like the serendipity and being like, being willing to like, you know, mm -hmm. follow that too. Yeah. Yeah. Ignoring it doesn't make it go away. <laughs> I, I tried that. <laughs> I got very sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's another thing too. If you can, it not only doesn't make it go away, but it could potentially get worse type thing. Right. That's so, right. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think know. especially Nikki with these like chronic conditions, they yeah. don't just correct themselves. They do get louder and louder and louder and louder until you're like, really forced to listen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The goal is to not have to be forced to listen. <laughs> that's right. yeah. And that's why we have calls like this so that, you know, yeah. out while, while it's still somewhat manageable and keep staying on the hunt for that. Um, yeah. What, um, I don't even, I don't know where my thought was going just now. <laughs> 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 so you've been, um, you've been, a doc for you said 10 years, I believe, or over 10 years. Yeah, about, I think it's about 12 years now. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. And where yeah. are you based out of? Oh, sorry, say again. Where are, you, where are you based out of again? Oh, I'm in San Francisco. Okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I work with people here all over California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Um, what has been one of the most challenging cases you've, if you can share, you know, mm -hmm. like something that has really, like, for one, I was think because I was thinking about med school, and I was like, 
oh, you get to learn all this. And then once you're out there on your own, you're like, holy crap, I'm like responsible. <laughs> yeah. like, how, how did you handle that part of um, transitioning and you're coming across difficult mm -hmm. and things like that? Yeah, I think it really has been like a process of growth. And uh, I did a residency after naturopathic school because I really wanted to see a lot of people and get that experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I started in primary care. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool because I just got to see such a huge, I worked in a, like a, um, an integrative primary care group called One Medical Group for about six years. And um, it was so cool because I got to see such a variety of clients there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything from like, you know, a broken toe to, you know, chronic fatigue and uh, everything in between. So mm -hmm. I love just getting that variety of experience. And mm -hmm. that really helped build my confidence because there were so many, you know, bite sized pieces yeah. that I got to see and experience. And um, that helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, going through this chronic complex illness, which is kind of this category of, of these things that I've been through, um, that personal experience, of course, informs my care immensely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and builds my confidence around people's ability to heal because mm -hmm. I've experienced it myself. Mm -hmm. so every pretty much everything I do with clients, I've tried it myself. Yeah, and um, and then and I love now. I love you know, and then finally, you know, I think building the confidence around working with these types of conditions and other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and now I only love doing, I don't, I don't even want to do primary care anymore. I, <laughs> I really only do complex chronic health conditions because that's really my passion. And I love helping people free themselves from mm -hmm. what can become so binding, mm -hmm. so limiting, and your life can become just small and, small and smaller with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to really focus on living life or being in involved with things when you're dealing with pain or, or fatigue and, and things like that and you don't know the source of it or what to do to resolve it or manage yeah. it yeah yeah uh, like all issues i see that a lot you know people are you know scheduling their commutes and scheduling their activities around like when they have to use the bathroom i mean it's just it can become just so 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 narrow you can't travel you can't socialize you know it's really really mm -hmm. hard for people mm -hmm. I love that you have um, other docs and medical professionals refer to you when you, that's how you know you've like specialized and you are really yeah. working in an area that you're really passionate about because you're like, we're going to fix this. <laughs> we're going to figure yeah, this out. I'm going to dig in there and really see what's going on and really support your body and build it back up and mm -hmm. clear out the things that are keeping it from getting ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, do you have any tips that you would like to um just for anybody dealing with complex things like if they can't mm -hmm. well, why do you see people virtually i know there there requires i'm sure some physical um parts to the to your service but do you see people virtually as well at the moment i do yeah with corona everything kind of shifted mm -hmm. virtually so as long as people are in california i can see them mm -hmm. i can't work with people out of state now but um you know, I think, I think finding, like we're talking about one, just listening to your body is so key. Mm -hmm. I think two, then finding someone who can guide you through the process, because I see people spin for a long time, you know, trying this test that they see on Instagram or this supplement that came through their Facebook feed. And, mm -hmm. and then you're just kind of like, is, is that term? Like it's throwing spaghetti at the wall or something. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah, like you're sticks. just like, see what sticks, yes. <laughs> and, and you can just really be in that and spend a lot of money and resources and time going down these rabbit holes. And I, I just think when you work with a clinician, it streamlines it so much. Mm -hmm. You'll get there mm -hmm. so much faster. Mm -hmm. And we all need support. I have clinicians that I work with for my own care. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm treating myself either. So, you know, it helps to have a team. Yeah. And getting that support because again, it's not it's not a straight line. It's a twisty, yeah, twisty road yeah. to health. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a point to bring up too. You, um, we say listen to your body, but if mm -hmm. something's so chronic and that has become normal to you, how do you yeah. get out of? How do you get to a point where you're like, wait, this isn't normal? I know uh, 
intuitively you kind of hear it, but then you, if you're in the part where you're like questioning your, your intuition. Mm -hmm. So some things, what I love, you mentioned earlier, like if you're having pains and this time at this time or whatever, um, that's not normal. So what are some other abnormal things that people may have normalized even for themselves if they haven't gone to a doctor to be normalized? Is there anything that comes to mind um, that you could share? I think, I think that um, the piece around, you know, am I getting through my day with ease or am I like struggling and fighting to get through my day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty simple measure. Yeah. Measure. If you tune into and kind of listen deeply with that mm -hmm. how hard is it to get through day to day um but in an honest way not in a defended way or in a right um, you know because we're all we're we're conditioned to push so much in this mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. um you know but if you're struggling or if you've you know seen doctors are telling your labs and you have this thing and you're like and they're telling you they're normal and you're like mm, Mm -hmm. I don't feel normal. Like that's enough mm -hmm. to, that's to start enough. start the that process is. of further investigation. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or if you're doing everything, if you're sleeping and eating well and exercising, and you know, and you're still not feeling good, that's enough. Yeah, to go see someone. Yeah, yeah, because there could be so many different things. Not absorbing the right vitamins, because you know, so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we'll, we'll, we'll eat, especially if you're eating well, like a, a lot of leafy greens and you're exhausted and you're like every day yeah. you're not absorbing something's going on with your stomach line. You're not absorbing the nutrients. Um, yeah. Yeah. I hear I, this all the time. People are like, you know, I'm doing everything right, but I still feel bad. Mm -hmm. That's not normal. <laughs> That's not, there's, there's something going on, you know, mm -hmm. there's something more. Because I think a lot of people put the fault on themselves too, you know, yeah. like if I just eat a little bit better, sleep a little bit more, exercise more, mm -hmm. um, they don't just think like, oh, maybe it's a sign that my, I need some support. Yeah. So they'll push harder in other areas. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the idea of not pushing harder in other areas because <laughs> it could just yeah. exacerbate whatever yeah. if it's something. Just put, you know, that whole thing like, oh, just push more. Mm -hmm. That that got me in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're um, we've got just a couple minutes left. Yeah. If there's uh, any last things you'd like to say? If you have any programs that you do um, that you'd mm -hmm. like to share about, like anything coming up, um, feel free to to share with with folks. Whoever catches this, we had some yeah. live guests, and whoever catches it later. Yeah. Well, I would say, you know, I mean, the areas I specialize in are autoimmune, mm -hmm. uh, thyroid, digestive issues, um, but also that feeling of like things aren't just right. And mm -hmm. I know they're not right, mm -hmm. but no one's telling me what's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's really like, you know, the client group I work with. And we work in a mix of, of ways of supporting people. We do a lot of education because I think education is power. And I want my clients to have like lifelong health and know how to achieve that for mm -hmm. themselves, for each of them as an individual. Mm -hmm. And then we dive in there, you know, a specialty testing that is there to go beyond what you experience with your regular doctor to really key in on where things are off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, then we have really individual clinical support too and work with people over time as mm -hmm. opposed to just trying to patch things up. We're really trying to get in there and support you from a deeper level Yeah, that's just going to be sustained after your care with us. Yeah. That's important. So that's the work we love doing. We work through programs for that reason to really have that container to work with you over a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're not going anywhere. We're <laughs> doing, that, doing that work. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, her, I have Dr. Mann's in contact information in the bio on the YouTube channel. So, um, if you catch us after, after we are done airing, feel free to reach out to her. Um, and Dr. Mann, I really appreciate your time today. You're sharing expertise and tips mm -hmm. with those who get a chance to watch and I wish you the best rest of your Sunday. Oh, thanks Nikki. I appreciate you. Oh, my pleasure. Everyone. 
Have a really great day. Thank you for watching now or later. And we'll see you on the next Tips Over Tea. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified anytime we upload a new video or go live. And we'll see you next time.